Tonight, the deadly attack on U.S. troops. What we've now learned, the response now coming. President Biden says he's made a decision on the response after that drone strike killing three American soldiers, wounding more than 40 others. Martha Raddatz standing by live from Amman, Jordan, which sources are now telling ABC News about the response. Here in the U.S., the border crisis, with Senate Republicans and Democrats signaling they're the closest in years on an immigration solution, the House signaling they're not interested. Instead, moving to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, Rachel Scott live on the Hill. The dramatic surveillance images tonight showing armed Israeli commandos disguised as a doctor, a woman, and a patient in a wheelchair, raiding a hospital in the West Bank. What they claim about who they were after, James Longman from Israel. The tourists killed on board a boat off Cancun after the boat sinks. Several others rescued, the captain arrested tonight. We're tracking a new major storm that will slam the U.S. Los Angeles up to Seattle, Denver and Minneapolis bracing where this is all headed. Dramatic new testimony tonight in the trial of the Michigan mother charged in her son's deadly school shooting. What she can be heard saying in the car about her son after the shooting. Tonight, implanting a chip in a human brain. Elon Musk announcing his company Neuralink has now successfully done this what it could potentially mean for patients with paralysis after strokes, accidents, ALS. Will Reeve reporting. Tonight, the Carnival Cruise rescuing two kayakers stranded out at sea, the extraordinary rescue. And the other rescue tonight on the highway, police saving circus animals from this burning truck, the camels and zebras and other animals rescued. And the beloved actress who took Broadway by storm from West Side Story to Chicago. Tonight, the tributes to a trailblazer as we celebrate Broadway star Cheetah Rivera. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. We do begin tonight with the U.S. retaliation now coming after the deadly drone attack on U.S. troops, killing three U.S. soldiers in Jordan. The Pentagon giving President Biden multiple options. Tonight, the president says he has now decided how the U.S. will respond. The president tonight saying he holds Iran responsible for supplying the weapons used in the attack. The Pentagon says U.S. forces in the region have come under attack at least 165 times by Iranian-backed militants. This one, of course, taking American lives. President Biden speaking to each of the families of the fallen, and tonight he has decided now on a response. Martha Raddatz leading us off. Martha traveling to Amman, Jordan tonight. Tonight, final preparations underway for retaliatory strikes against Iran-backed militants, which could come at any time now. A response to the brazen drone attack that left three American soldiers dead, 40 wounded at a remote desert base here in Jordan. President Biden today making clear his mind is made up. Yes. A response that will strike multiple targets over several days, according to a U.S. official targeting the facilities that enabled the drone attack. But another senior U.S. official acknowledging that the strikes will not likely hit Iran itself, given the president's deep concerns over the war escalating. I do hold respons them responsible in the sense that they're supplying the weapons to the people who did it. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. That's not what I'm looking for. The U.S. did strike facilities in Syria used by Iran's Revolutionary Guard back in November, a facility believed to be providing weapons and funding to the militant groups in Iraq and Syria. One of the Iranian-backed groups under suspicion tonight, Qatab Hezbollah, claims it's suspending attacks on U.S. forces in the region, but the Pentagon saying actions speak louder than words. I don't think we could be any more clear uh, that we have called on the Iranian proxy groups to stop their attacks. Uh, they have not. And so we will respond in a time and manner of our choosing. President Biden today speaking with the families of the fallen soldiers, 46-year-old Sergeant William Rivers, 23-year-old Sergeant Brianna Moffat, and 24-year-old Sergeant Kennedy Sanders. The president expressing sorrow for their deaths and gratitude for their service. Today, Moffat and Sanders posthumously promoted to the rank of sergeant. She wanted to... And tonight, our Faith Abube speaking with the family of Brianna Moffat, who was on her first deployment. Her mother, Francine, describing the moment military officials told her 
her daughter was dead. He looked at me and he said, I'm sorry, Miss Moffitt, but Brianna was killed this morning in a drone attack. And I'm like, my baby, my baby, you can't take my baby. And she's gone. She's, she's not coming back. When I see her again, it's in her casket. She's not walking through my front door. So extraordinarily painful to hear from that mother tonight. Martha uh, with us live from Amman, Jordan. And Martha, I know we've learned that President Biden will attend the dignified transfer of those soldiers on Friday back to Dover. And Martha, in the meantime, what more are you learning tonight about the coming American response to this deadly attack? David, even though the president is hesitant to strike Iran itself during this planned multi-day bombing barrage, a U.S. official tells me tonight that Iranian assets outside of Iran could be targets, and most of the strikes, said the official, will be inside Syria. David? Martha Raddatz traveling to the region live from Amman tonight. Martha, we appreciate it. Back here at home now into the crisis at the border. For months, Republicans have put pressure on President Biden to do something. And now with Senate Republicans and Democrats close to the first potential bipartisan deal on immigration in years, tonight House Republicans say they're not interested. Instead, moving forward in their effort to impeach Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. Rachel Scott on the Hill again tonight. For months, Republicans have been calling for a tough new immigration law. President Biden says he's willing to compromise. And the Senate is closing in on a bipartisan deal. But tonight, House Republicans taking a very different approach. Not interested in the Senate solution, they're moving instead to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas over his handling of the border. We cannot allow this man to remain in office any longer. Democrats calling it ludicrous. The sham impeachment of Secretary Mayorkas is a baseless political stunt by extreme mega Republicans. Republicans say Mayorkas has willfully and systematically refused to enforce immigration laws, accusing him of making false statements to Congress that the border is secure. Mayorkas defiant, saying he has testified in front of Congress 27 times, more than any other Biden cabinet official, writing, you claim that we have failed to enforce our immigration laws, that is false. Democrats call it the height of hypocrisy for Republicans to move ahead with the impeachment right in the middle of negotiations over the immigration bill. You are sitting here right now trying to impeach a secretary of Homeland Security for neglecting his duties literally while he is trying to perform his duties and negotiate legislation. Today, President Biden urging lawmakers to give him the tools he needs to control the crisis at the border. That's not all I can do. Just give me the power. But House Speaker Mike Johnson is being urged to kill the bill by Donald Trump, who doesn't want Biden to score a win in an election year. And Johnson tells me if what he's heard about the Senate compromise is true, it's dead on arrival in the House. Is that a non-starter for Republicans in the House? We have a responsibility, a duty to the American people to insist that the border catastrophe has ended. And just uh, trying to whitewash that or, or, or do something for political purposes that it appears that may be is not going to cut it. Again, David, Donald Trump has been urging Republicans to reject any border deal. He wants to campaign on immigration in the general election. Tonight, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson rejecting any idea that he's trying to kill this bill to help Trump's campaign, calling it all absurd, David. Rachel Scott following it all on the Hill. Rachel, thank you. We do have dramatic surveillance images coming in tonight. Israeli commandos disguised storming a hospital in the West Bank. You can see the armed Israeli commandos right here disguised as a doctor, a woman and a patient in a wheelchair raiding that hospital tonight who they claim they were after in the hospital and james long reporting from israel for us dramatic video tonight of an israeli undercover raid on a hospital in the occupied west bank the palestinian authority releasing this security footage you can see israeli special forces disguised as medical staff one dressed as a doctor another as a palestinian woman and another with a wheelchair Brandishing their weapons, they move quickly. The IDF said they targeted three Palestinian fighters, one of them a member of Hamas, who they claim were planning terror attacks in the immediate future. 
using that hospital as a hiding place. The bloody aftermath confirming at least one of the men was killed in his hospital bed. <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu today praising the operation, but many are now raising concerns over Israel's tactics, calling them a potential war crime. Israel, of course, has the right to carry out operations to bring terrorists to justice, but those operations need to be conducted in full compliance with international humanitarian law. Even if they were clear targets, clearly misusing the hospital, it would still be a war crime to present as a civilian or a medic to get proximate to them. This, the same day Hamas says they're reviewing the latest ceasefire deal and the release of the more than 100 hostages. As U.S. officials confirmed to ABC News, the framework includes at least a six-week pause in hostilities, during which the remaining civilian hostages would be returned in phases, with the elderly women and any children released first. They'd then discuss the return of all IDF soldiers, potentially extending the pause and getting some much-needed aid into Gaza, where Hamas says more than 26,000 have now been killed. So let's bring in our foreign correspondent, James Longman, tonight. And James, how close are they to a hostage deal here? Well, David, it does feel like we're on the edge of something. Prime Minister Netanyahu did say today he would reject some of Hamas's key demands. But is this part of the war of words or is the deal really around the corner? David? James Longman in Tel Aviv tonight. James, thank you. Tonight, several tourists are dead and a boat captain under arrest after a boat carrying more than a dozen tourists sinks off Cancun. Four tourists did not survive this. Authorities say the boat was returning to Cancun in rough seas. A wave throwing passengers into the water, the boat then sinking. Nearby boats rescuing eight other people, several passengers still missing tonight. The victims, all Mexican nationals. Tonight, the captain has been arrested while this investigation is now underway. Back here in the U.S. into the dramatic new testimony tonight in the trial of the Michigan mother, Jennifer Crumbly, charged in her son's deadly school attack. What she can be heard saying in the police car about her son after the shooting. Here's Trevor Alt. While Jennifer Crumbly sat in a squad car outside her home in the hours after learning her son had opened fire at Oxford High School, she told an investigating officer her son was a good kid and she and her husband were not bad people. This was up. Yeah. Like, I just, my son just ruined his life. I'm probably never seeing him again. Crumbly now on trial for involuntary manslaughter, telling the officer everything had been normal when her son went to school and he had, quote, no mental issues. I don't get it. I don't get what happened. Inside the house, detectives discovering these gun range targets with bullet holes on the walls of the shooter's bedroom, an empty bottle of whiskey next to the then 15-year-old's bed. In the master bedroom, an open gun case next to an empty box of ammunition for a 9mm handgun. And inside the TV stand, two other weapons found locked in a gun case, prosecutors noting the code. And what was it? It was a zero, zero, zero. Crumbly telling the investigator she'd been at the school the morning of the attack for an emergency meeting with the shooter's counselor, then returned to work. Her son opened fire less than two hours later. Jennifer Crumbly's attorney again questioned why school officials didn't do more. Today, the dean of students testified the parents didn't tell them they had bought their son a gun, which would have changed the school's response. David Trevor on this case again tonight. Thank you, Trevor. We're going to turn next this evening to what could be a major medical breakthrough. Elon Musk announcing his company Neuralink has successfully implanted a chip in a human brain. Patients would use the chip to communicate with computers and smartphones. What this could potentially mean for patients with paralysis after strokes, accidents, and diseases, including ALS. Here's ABC's Will Reeve tonight. Tonight, a sign of hope for millions of Americans living with paralysis. Billionaire Elon Musk announcing that his company Neuralink has surgically implanted its first brain chip in a human. He says the patient is recovering well and called the initial results promising. The device is designed to interpret your neural activity so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking. The goal is to help patients with debilitating conditions control external devices with their thoughts. Experts say the technology could one day benefit people paralyzed by stroke, brain and spinal cord injury or ALS. This would be a major game changer um, if it were to be proven to be safe and effective. Neuralink's device is now in clinical trials, joining a handful of other groups testing brain-computer interface technology. This woman, who had lost her voice, was able to have a conversation with her husband through a mind-controlled avatar. I was thinking about running to the store. What time will you be home? And Swiss researchers used artificial intelligence and brain and spine implants to help this man, paralyzed in a motorcycle accident, to walk again. 
Experts say it's still a long road to prove the success and safety of Neuralink's device and others like it before it would be approved for consumers. But David, this is a beacon of hope for people living with paralysis from things like stroke or ALS or brain or spinal cord injury. Those were remarkable examples you shared with us, Will. Thank you. The wife able to communicate with her husband, really something. Will Reeve tonight. Thank you, Will. Tonight, an alarming discovery. Police in Wichita, Kansas, have found the stolen bronze statue of Jackie Robinson. The statue, of course, honoring the baseball icon, taken from a public park last week. Firefighters responding to a trash fire, finding it in pieces and burning. Authorities say the statue cannot be salvaged. Police insist there will be arrests. Donations, by the way, already coming in for a new statue. Tonight, UPS says it is cutting 12,000 jobs, most from management and contract positions, they say. The company says it needs to, quote, right-size its workforce after volume fell in 2023 and 2024 projections are now lower than expected. UPS employs about a half million people worldwide. When we come back here tonight, tracking a major new storm set to slam the U.S., where this is headed. Also, the Carnival cruise ship rescuing two kayakers lost out at sea the incredible images here. And then look at this tonight. The rescue on the highway, a burning yes. truck. The circus animals saved tonight. Several animals. One more. Come on, let's go. We're getting back. Tonight we are tracking this major new storm set to slam the west. A strong atmospheric river hitting tomorrow into Thursday from Los Angeles right up to Seattle there. High wind warnings, possible landslides, flood and winter storm watches. And across much of the country tomorrow, temperatures 20 to 30 degrees above normal. 50s and 60s from Denver to Minneapolis. When we come back here tonight, the animals rescued from that burning truck on the highway. And we celebrate a beloved Broadway and movie star. She broke barriers. To the index and a carnival cruise ship has rescued two men stranded in a kayak well out to sea in the Gulf of Mexico. The men had climbed into the kayak after their boat went down. Crew members on board the Carnival Jubilee spotted them off the coast of Mexico while sailing from Texas to the Caribbean. And from Indiana tonight, the circus animals rescued in Grant County. Two police officers helping rescue nearly a dozen circus animals from a burning truck. This is I-69. Body camera video showing police pulling zebras out of the truck. Five zebras and a horse were saved. They also rescued four camels from that burning trailer. When we come back here tonight, celebrating a beloved Broadway star, Cheetah Rivera. Finally tonight here, what couldn't she do? Celebrating Cheetah Rivera. Cheetah Rivera was an icon, a dazzling force. Hey, Considered a triple threat, singing, acting, and dancing. She was also a trailblazer, breaking ground for Latina artists. A classically trained ballet dancer. Her big break was in 1957 as Anita in West Side Story on Broadway. She would appear on Broadway for the next half century, playing Rosie in 1960's Bye Bye Birdie. In 1975, as Velma Kelly in Chicago. Come on, baby, why don't we paint the tag? And all that jazz, I'm gonna Winning a Tony Award for her performance alongside Liza Minnelli in 1984's The Rink. Millions of Americans would watch her performances on TV and in the movies, too. Do you want to have fun? 1969's Sweet Charity. In 1986, a near-fatal car accident would shatter her leg, but Cheetah Rivera refused to let it end her career. There would be grueling physical therapy and she would return to the Broadway stage, earning her second Tony in 1993 at 60 for Kiss of the Spider Woman. If you run away, some Cheetah Rivera sitting down with ABC News just a couple of years ago on the secret to longevity and to staying power. Be yourself, work hard, and just think you can do everything and anything until you find out you can't. We learn late today that Cheetah Rivera died at the age of 91. Tonight here, Cheetah Rivera, in her own words. We should have two lives. One a tryout, <laughs> and one you're judged by. But we don't. We have one life, and we have to live it as best we can. Cheetah, Cheetah. 
Cheetah Rivera, a singular talent, and what strength all these years. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.